I'd like to thank the Acute Care Surgery Joint Symposium for this invitation to present to you the topic um, today of the role of MIS for gastric outlet obstruction and volvulus. I have nothing to disclose. Really quickly, I'm gonna give a background on gastric volvulus, which is the abnormal rotation of the stomach leading to a closed loop obstruction. Most commonly, we see organoaxial volvulus, which rotates along the longitudinal axis, connecting the G junction and the pylorus. And less commonly, we see mesoaxial uh, volvulus, which rotates along the horizontal axis, bisecting the greater and the lesser curves of the stomach. Gastric volvulus can be divided into primary and secondary. Um, we most commonly see secondary gastric volvulus, um, where there's some sort of underlying associated condition, such as a diaphragmatic hernia or a parasophageal hernia, and less commonly see primary gastric volvulus, which um, requires the stomach to be subdiaphragmatic and is typically seen with an absence or laxity of the gastrocolic or gastrosplenic ligaments. Gastric volvulus can also be divided between acute and chronic volvulus. Um, patients that present with acute gastric volvulus have uh, a sudden onset of, of abdominal or chest pain with severe uh, vomiting and epigastric distension, and often present with Borchardt's triad, which is pain, retching, and the inability to pass a nasogastric tube, which most commonly indicates an organoaxial volvulus and a closed loop obstruction. But patients can also have chronic gastric volvulus, and they can have a broad array of symptoms. Um, and these patients either have an incomplete volvulus of less than 180 degrees, or they have recurrent, intermittent, complete volvulus. So when I look at a topic like this, I always like to start by looking at the guidelines um, in the literature and consensus statements. Um, and really, there's um, not a lot published on acute gastric volvulus. But SAGES um, does have guidelines um, with regards to management of hiatal hernias, which states that an acute gastric volvulus requires reduction of the stomach with limited resection if needed. So inevitably, we always get called at 2 a.m. Um, from the ER. And um, often it goes something like, you have a 69-year-old female with diabetes, high blood pressure, and reflux who presents with a two-day history of upper abdominal pain with intractable retching and vomiting. Um, and we have a chest x-ray and a CT scan which shows an acute gastric volvulus. Um, so the first thing that always comes to our minds is that, um, does this patient need a surgery? And does she need a surgery right now? Um, and um, or can it wait um, for later on um, uh, in this admission? Um, and in these patients, NG tube decompression can really change um, the operation from being an emergent urgent one to being a semi-elective one. Say in this patient, you were able to get that NG tube in and decompress the stomach, um, and you want to continue um, uh, uh, with your diagnostic workup. Well, as I said, most of the time, the ER has already done the CT scan, which is great. Um, it's highly sensitive, shows your anatomy well, um, shows evidence of whether or not there's a gastric perforation and any risk for gastric ischemia with pneumatosis, fluid, air, or stranding in the hernia sac. Um, I actually find an upper GI to be quite helpful in these situations, um, particularly once you were able to stabilize um, or temporize a patient with an NG tube. Um, upper GI can tell you if they have gastric outlet obstruction. Um, and if the contrast does go into the duodenum, um, then that tells you that you have some time to make a decision as the most appropriate approach for this patient. It also gives you information about the motility of the esophagus. And then lastly, flexible endoscopy can be highly valuable in patients with gastric volvulus, both preoperative flexible endoscopy and intraoperative flexible endoscopy, as they could be diagnostic and therapeutic. So when you have a patient with gastric volvulus and gastric outlet obstruction, this is really a surgical emergency because this represents a closed loop obstruction. The very first step in management is gastric decompression and reduction of the volvulus. You can do this with an NG tube. Um, however, if this is not possible to pass blindly, you may need to do it with flexible endoscopy. And this can be done as you advance your scope through the esophagus um, towards the G junction, 
um, with some gentle pushing and insufflation, you can actually reduce the volvulus. And then once you get into the stomach, you can um, decompress the stomach, you can assess for gas the gastric mucosa for ischemia. Um, and all of this gives you the possibility of a semi-elective definitive repair. Um, it allows you to temporize a patient for risk stratification, optimization, and then if needed, transfer to a higher level of care. So Rodriguez and colleagues put together this really nice algorithm for the management of gastric volvulus. This algorithm is dependent on a couple key elements, which is symptom improvement with NG tube decompression and the ability to evaluate for gastric ischemia via flexible endoscopy. Um, and really the management is dependent on um, acute versus chronic, um, presence of ischemia or not, and the patient's perioperative risk. So when you're planning your definitive treatment, you wanna consider three questions. One, is there ischemia? Two, is there a, um, a parasophageal hernia? And three, what is the patient's perioperative risk profile? You wanna keep your operative goals in mind, which is reducing the volvulus, preventing its reoccurrence, and then repairing any predisposing factors like a parasophageal hernia or a diaphragmatic hernia. So one would argue maybe why an MIS approach? Why don't you just do it open the presenting emergently or urgently for surgery? Um, and it's the same argument we all make for MIS approaches um, because it brings good things for the patient, um, faster recovery, less pain, shorter length of stay, better cosmesis and less cost. And when we talk about an MIS approach, you know, we're talking about um, a laparoscopic approach, a robotic approach, or even an endoscopic approach. What patients should we avoid MIS in? Um, in patients you would generally avoid MIS in. Um, if you have poor visibility, you have a massive stomach that can't be decompressed, you have hemodynamic instability or evidence of perforation or necrosis. Um, when you're in the operating room, um, you wanna consider um, and work through these technical steps. Um, you have to have complete reduction of the volvulus and or the hernia. You must assess um, the stomach for viability. Um, you may have to do a partial or complete gastrectomy and you need to control any contamination. You have to do a diaphragmatic or curl repair. Um, and then you have to have some sort of subdiaphragmatic anchoring of the stomach, either with a fundoplication um, or with gastropexy. Um, when we discuss gastropexy or fixation of the stomach, it's really indicated um, in one of two situations. Either the operative risk of a hiatal hernia repair or fundoplication is prohibitive for the patient or if the operating surgeon either lacks the experience um, or the resources necessary and wants to use this as a temporizing measure. Um, when we talk about gastropexy, um, you have three different approaches to it. Um, an endoscopic approach, which assumes that the volvulus has been successfully reduced. Um, a laparoendoscopic approach, which you can fail, uh, which you can use if you have a failed endoscopic reduction. And then a laparoscopic approach um, in which you can suture the stomach every two to three centimeters um, to the diaphragm or the anterior abdominal wall as demonstrated in this diagram um, and in the pictures above. So several um, groups have looked um, at specifically acute gastric volvulus. Um, Light and colleagues um, did an um, institutional review of gastric volvulus. Um, and they found 36 patients, major, um, of which the majority had a parasophageal hernia, and the majority of those patients subsequently underwent surgery on that admission. They were able to successfully treat seven of their patients um, with a laparoscopic approach. About two-thirds underwent a hiatal hernia repair, and about a third um, underwent a gastropexy. And specifically, when they looked at their mean length of stay, um, the patients that underwent a laparoscopic approach had overall a shorter um, length of stay than those that underwent an open approach. They subsequently um, uh, developed an algorithm on how to approach these patients. And um, I put this up here just um, to demonstrate that within their algorithm after endoscopy, um, the intervention that they're recommending is actually laparoscopy. Um, except in the setting of um, gastric necrosis, perforation or mediastinitis, shock or the need for inotropes, and then a previous history of a hiatal hernia repair or multiple laparotomies.
just recently in the World Journal of Emergency Surgery, um, Testini and colleagues actually looked at their 10-year institutional experience um, and did a nice literature review. And what they ultimately concluded was that um, immediate open surgery is recommended for any unstable patient, but that an emergent laparoscopic reduction and repair is recommended for all stable patients. And then lastly, Hossein and colleagues um, just last year um, presented um, this nice um, national database review um, of hiatal hernia repairs, and um, which they compared patients that underwent an open laparoscopic or robotic um, repair and compared elective versus emergent um, urgent cases. And if you look at emergent urgent cases specifically, um, and we assume that these patients required an emergent urgent operation because of obstruction or volvulus, that overall patients that underwent a laparoscopic or robotic approach had um, less complications, both moderate and major, as well as um, decreased length of stay uh, and mortality. And they subsequently concluded in their review um, that patients should be offered an MIS approach, even in the setting um, of an emergent or urgent situation, if it's technically feasible. Lastly, um, you know, some takeaway points of uh, an um, approaching patients with an acute gastric volvulus and or gastric outlet obstruction is that immediate decompression and reduction of the volvulus is critical. Using preoperative flexible endoscopy um, to help guide your management um, is beneficial. Um, plan for your definitive treatment. And then an MIS approach is preferred even in an emergent urgent setting, um, except in the situation of an unstable patient. Thank you so much for this opportunity to present this topic. Um, I look forward to answering questions on the panel. I've also listed my email if anybody wants to reach out to me for any specific questions. Thank you again.